بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله والصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm your brother Abdurrahim McCarthy A quick reminder I want to remind myself of these days and my brothers and sisters in Islam and that is about the blessings of the day of Arafah Alhamdulillah during the days the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah we are blessed to be in these days where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised them in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi informed us that there's no day that doing good deeds in it is better than these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and during these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah we have the greatest day of the year because the greatest days of the year are these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah which a lot of us tend to forget about but the greatest day of the year is the day of Arafah the greatest day الشمس, that the sun rose upon as the Prophet sallallahu taught us and from the virtues or the greatness of this day is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he swore by this day in the Quran when you go back to the tafsir of Surah Al-Buruj in verse 3 وَالشَّاهِدُ وَمَشْهُودُ Abu Huraira narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Yawm Al-Mu'ud, the promised day is Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the day Al-Mashhud is Yawm Arafah and the Shahid is Yawm Al-Jum'ah, the day of Jum'ah and this came in the Jami' of Imam Al-Tirmidhi and is considered an authentic hadith so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by this day also in Surah Al-Fajr in Al-Shaf'i Wal-Witr when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the Shaf'i Wal-Witr Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he said the Shaf is the day of Adha, the day of Eid itself and the Witr is the day of uh, Yom Arafah so we gain from this and we benefit that Yom Arafah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he swore by it to show us the greatness and importance of this day so we can pay attention to this day we don't and then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the all great subhanahu wa ta'ala he swears by something he is showing us the importance of this so we can focus on it as Muslims also from the things that show us the greatness of this day is that it is the day that our deen, our religion was completed on. Omar al Khattab, he mentions that one of the Jews came to him. And he said, there's an ayah, there's a verse in the book of Allah. He said, if the Jews, if we knew it, we would have made this day an Eid. I mean, a day of celebration. He said, what is that ayah? Omar al Khattab asked him. He said, Al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum. وَاتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ إِسْلَامَ دِينَ In Surah Al-Ma'idah, in this verse, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 3, he said that today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, today we have finished for you, we have completed for you religion, and we have perfected for you, or given you the complete ni'mah, the blessing, and we have chosen for you the religion of Islam as your religion. Umar al-Khattab, he said to the Jew, he said, verily I know when it came down. And which day it came down. He mentioned it was after, it was when the Prophet was standing on the day of Arafah, at Arafah, before, or in the Hajj al Wada'a, the farewell Hajj, he said this. So he said, We knew where it came down. It came down this day. So the deen was finished on this day. It's a reminder to us about the fact that our deen was completed and finished on this day. And this reminds us, when the deen is complete, that there's no need for anybody to add any religion. It reminds us of the importance of holding on to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not inventing anything into the religion. The religion is complete. Allah completed it for us. He perfected the religion for us on this day. A great reminder to us. And from the great things that all of us know, but we must constantly remind ourselves and remind our children especially. And that is fasting this day. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, as it came in the hadith of Abu Qatada and Sahih Muslim, that this day, the day of Arafah, you kafir as sana in this narration in Sahih Muslim the Prophet was asked about the fasting of Arafah he said that verily it will forgive the past year's sins and the coming year's sins so it's two years of sins forgiven for fasting one day and this shows us the mercy and the blessings and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ummah and it's a reminder to us to strive on this day and to continue striving throughout the year as well so it's important that we remind ourselves during these days about the importance of fasting these days. Don't say I have to work, I have this. It's only one day. Remind our kids about the importance of fasting this day from a young age. So they'll know the importance and the status of the day of Arafah and they'll focus on benefiting from this day from the young age and all through their life inshallah ta'ala. The day of Arafah is a day where the sins are forgiven. Where the people are forgiven from the hellfire. People are saved from the hellfire and Allah praises His servants as well. 
It came in several narrations. Like for example, in Sahih Muslim, the Hadith of Aisha, and another narration in the uh, Muslim of Imam Ahmed, from the Hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, different narrations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on this day He will free people from the hellfire, and that He will forgive them from their sins. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell His angels, look at my servants who have come here at Arafah, and that they, uh, they have come here in the situation where their, their hair is all messed up and, and, and full of dust because of the traveling to Arafah. And they've come to call on me and ask for my forgiveness. So he is praising them. He says to his, mala his malaika, he praises his servants on this day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, after knowing the status and the greatness of this day, it's, an important, it's important that we remind ourselves of things that we should or shouldn't be doing on this day. And one of the greatest things that we should stay away from on this day is any type of sins, any type of deeds that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this should be the way of the Muslim all throughout the year. I'm going to mention to you a hadith. The hadith, there's a difference of opinion. Is it authentic or not? The scholars, some scholars say it's authentic, some say it's not. And the hadith was narrated by Imam Ahmed in his musnad uh, that Al-Fadl uh, al ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, the cousin of the Prophet sallam, that he was on Hajj. And it was confirmed in another hadith that when they started to make from the Miqat, that he saw him looking over to a uh, woman and he moved away. In this narration, they were in Arafah. And this narration, the Prophet Sallallahu he moved his head back. And he looked again. He moved his head back. So when he kept looking, he said to him, Ya Ibn Akhi. He said, Inna hadha yawm man malaka, man malaka fihi sam'uhu, wa basaruhu, wa lisanuhu, ghufira lahu. That whoever during this day controls his sight, what he looks at, and that what he listens to, and that which he says, that Allah will forgive him. So it's a great chance to get forgiven on this day, but we must stay away from doing any sins or anything that's displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this day. And like I said, this is how we should be all during the year, but on this day, it's even more important to emphasize staying away from that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the things we need to focus on during this day is making a lot of dhikr, remembering Allah. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum has said that we were with the Prophet sallallahu in the day of Arafah, and he said, some of us were making takbir, Allahu Akbar, and some of us were making tahleel, la ilaha illallah. What's important is constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the takbir, it starts, by the way, there's two types of takbir during these days of Dhul Hijjah. The first one starts from the beginning of Dhul Hijjah, from the first day of Dhul Hijjah, and that's any time, any place. That's why Abu, that's why Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhum, they used to always make the takbir in the aswat, the marketplaces, and what have you. So it's important that we constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Anytime, any place during these days. And it's from the sha'ar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we make the deen clear to the people, remind the people to remember Allah and to be with Allah during these days. And on the day of Arafah, it starts, there's a special takbir, which starts from the day of Arafah, after the five daily prayers in the masjid, we shouldn't say it as a group. Pay attention to this. We should not say it as a group where the imam says it and then everybody steps in. Everybody should say it by himself. So don't say it in a group and fall into any type of innovation. And this I asked myself. I asked Sheikh Mbaz about this and he told me no, it should only be done by individually, not by in, in a group form. After this, remembering Allah at all times, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the greatest dua the greatest dua is the dua of Arafah. And he said, and the best thing that I used to say in the prophets before me was, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say this dua. And he said the best dua is to make dua during Arafah. And he would focus and stand in his Arafah alayhi salatu wa sallam, and just focus dua, returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So go, going in depth in dua. Focusing so much in dua on this day. And the scholars of Islam mentioned that the correct opinion is that this dua is not just for the people of Arafah. It's for everybody during this day. They can get this ajr of this being the greatest form of dua. The best type or time to dua is during this day. So focus on this dua and focus on saying La ilaha illallah wahduhu la sharika la lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd. And this reminds us of the importance of Tawheed, of having pure Islamic monotheism, only worshipping Allah as one, 
not have any partners with him, not doing anything for Riyā, so other people can say about this, having a khlas in your ibadah, that you are Muslim, you only live for Allah, everything you do is for Allah. And this brings us to an end. A quick reminder about the blessings and the virtues and the status of this blessed day of Arafah. We focus on it, we fast on it, we make the dua, we stay away from that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We strive during this day. Inshallah, perhaps it will be a changing point in our life to strive throughout the year. And Allah knows best. Allahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad.